So, continuing uh, modeling and simulation application in a previous lecture, we discussed about various general steps of modeling approaches. Now, we will go into different aspects of you know these models one by one. So, model calibration as I said that model calibration is one of the most important part of modeling exercise. If our calibration is not correct, then the modeling exercise will be totally unsuccessful. What we do in calibration actually? In calibration, we basically try to adjust various parameters and we try to do it manually or by using any kind of optimization technique until the model output becomes satisfactory, satisfactory for our purposes and it does match with the field observed or experimental conditions for a given set of conditions. So, I repeat again in model calibration what we try to do is to adjust various parameters in the model manually or through different optimization techniques till the point that we get the outcome from the model which are satisfactory and which are also in sync with the field or observed values or observed you know results. Once it matches then we can say that our model is calibrated and it is ready for further function. Now, the model you will try to then validate. Validate is a testing of a calibrated model with local field observed data which you have not used while calibrating this model. So, remember while you calibrate the model you also use field data, but while you validate it you use also field data, but that should be different set of data than the one that you have used for model calibration. So, in case of validation if you find that using this calibrated model you are able to get the outcomes which are almost same with the field observed value means that in another different field you know observed value then you can say that yes your model is calibrated and it can now you know give me result for different different fields. Once this is ready then you start your actual experiment actual analysis with the model. Now, for any natural systems as I said in the previous lecture that conceptual model development for any natural system is a critical step. Now, once your conceptual model is ready you are clear in mind then you go for mathematical, numerical, analytical or whatever type of model that you want for a particular natural system. Now, to run this kind of model of course, from that natural system you need in your hand good amount of observed data. Now, here when you choose any kind of model then you also look at the observed data and you check those observed data whether these observed data are of good quality, whether there is any errors or so. So, from the mathematical or numerical analytical model development of particular natural system, you actually try to check the quality of the data, any error whether it is there. Now, if there are errors, then you go for different process which will come in a minute. But if you are happy with your data set, then, then you start doing your setting the model calibration parameters. So, once your model calibration is done then you go for validation and then you run the developed model. Parallelly what is happening here when you are conceptualizing the model you can actually as I said in previous lecture you can try to think of using certain existing model as well empirical or black box type of model or any other model. So, on the other side if your observed data you find there are some errors then you need to see whether this error is still you know acceptable. If they are acceptable then you go for of course, calibration means this step. If they are acceptable you go ahead with calibration, but if the errors are not acceptable and certain parameters which are very critical and you feel that little bit of error can also affect your model. In that case what you have to do you have to now then update your model parameters and that is a very cumbersome exercise. Here you have to you know 
process your model parameters manually or through inverse modeling using various optimization technique. So, that exercise might take some time, but you cannot avoid if your judgment says that the error for the particular parameter observation is not acceptable. Instead of going doing entire exercise, it is better that you check here, rectify it through various processes and then this information or data you can fit in into the model and then again run with the revised or relatively error minimized error or error free data sets then you run. Once you run then you get the model output or the simulated results that simulated output again you check here whether they are ok, whether the results which are coming is meaningful satisfactory to your expectation or purposes. If it is satisfactory then the modeling exercise in there then comes representation of your result of modeling exercise which is another very important part of this simulation modeling study. Now, one part uh, that I have I have not discussed till now which is critically important for a good model development or model run is model sensitivity analysis. To quantify the effect of change of a particular parameter. Suppose uh, you are uh, running a model where rainfall is an input parameter and you find that any slight change of rainfall, amount of rainfall, it changes significantly your model outcome or output. So, that means you can say that your model is very, very sensitive to rainfall data or rainfall input parameter. So, to quantify this effect of change of a parameter on the model results, we carry out model sensitivity analysis and it is performed by changing one parameters at a time by a known amount and then measuring the effect in the model output. Now, I give an example of suppose a crop model where you want to see the impact of rainfall whether it is sensitive for your you know model outcome or not. So, what we can do is that we can change the value of the rainfall suppose 50 mm rainfall what is the outcome, 60 mm what is the outcome, 100 mm of rainfall what is the outcome and if you see that there is a significant changes in the outcome we are sure that our model is very very sensitive to rainfall ok. As far as the outcome model outcome which is your crop yield. So, that means crop yield is very, very sensitive in your model towards rainfall input parameter. So, that is why it is very, very critical that these three exercise model calibration, model validation and model sensitivity analysis are carried out with great sincerity. Now, we will talk about one by one these three you know very important uh, functionality or processes in modeling exercise. Model calibration we discussed that why we do it. Now, model calibration can be done in two way manual calibration and auto calibration. In case of manual calibration initially model parameter values are already assigned. Parameters are adjusted in several run of the model to reach the calibration target that you have fixed and this calibration process can be very much time taking and very, very laborious too. Lot of time actually uh, people spend while calibrating their model. As I said that if your calibration is not good, then certainly the model outcome will not be of that quality. So, needs little bit of you know experience and expertise to carry out this calibration exercise in case of modeling and simulation. Different parameter combination can give same result that is non unique solution. So, suppose rainfall, humidity, temperature, wind, wind speed together the combination of these parameters can give you same result ok. Now, if you go for suppose auto calibration in some model you may have that option. Calibration target can be achieved by writing inverse modeling code. What is that? That is by means of some traditional or non-traditional optimization technique you may follow for auto calibration. It highly depends upon the computational ability of the computer 
and also the person who is running the calibration he or she must have certain amount of expertise okay about you know computer running computer and also how actually computer behaves he or she must know about that but even if she doesn't have any previous modeling expertise still in case of auto calibration he can carry out the task sometime a person or individual may face little bit of instability or non uniqueness in some of the cases while carrying out the auto calibration so that you know you have to somehow address these issues by multiple times of auto calibration exercise now as you see that simulated values exist between the calibration target this is one condition simulated values exist between n times the associated error of the calibration target these two conditions you know you can get so this one we call as the highest level of calibration and the right hand side where simulated values exist between you know n times the associated error of the calibration targets we call that as the lowest level of calibration so to these two kind of situation that you might face while calibrating your model we must know about the performance of our various indicators in our model because each indicator could actually impact the model process and thus the model outcome i will discuss few of them one indicator could be mean absolute error mae so you calculate mae in this manner so lower values of mae gives you better result and it cannot provide any information on the overall trend of underestimated or overestimated values so if your mae value is less it is better for you because then your model result will be better but we also should remember that it can't provide any information on the overall trend of underestimation or overestimation because in modeling exercise we often face this kind of problem of under or overestimation so by different you know run different run and you know some adjustment of input parameter you can actually come you know you can reduce this overestimate or underestimation that's that's you learn with different you know multiple running of of a particular model root mean square error rmsc very very popular and known you know indicator for modeling performance testing here rmsc indicates your overall discrepancy between the observed values and the simulated values most of us actually you will see that we do go for rmsc to test you know our performance of our model lower the value of rmsc the more accurate the simulated result is clear now third correlation coefficient most popular among all of us pearson correlation coefficient is also an indicator for testing the model often we see you no know, a kind of a you know straight line if your data is like that then you come with uh, some straight line and then you come with you know r value if r value is you know quite high then you say that oh this is a fantastic correlation between you know or different uh, variables or parameters so correlation coefficient what it does it denotes the degree of linear association between your observed and simulated values your observed and simulated values so higher the r value better is your result so denotes degree of linear association between observed and simulated values and r is equal to 1 is a perfect correlation r is equal to 0 is no correlation okay so ideally we try to test and try to find out the different values of these different indicators in some cases we are happy when the value is high in some cases we are happy when the value is low depending on the nature of indicator that you are going to use next indicator coefficient of determination r square now r square values lies between you know 1 and 0 we know that in case of r square value higher 
values indicates better model performance. You remember we get very happy if we get R square value 0 0.9 or 0 0.8 you know, something like that. So, higher the R square value indicating better model performance and this R square value it describes the proportion of the total variance in the observed data, proportion of the total variance in the observed data that can be explained by this you know R square for a particular model. Okay? So, next is our NSE or Nash Shackley efficiency. What it does? This is widely used in case of hydrological modeling. Higher value which is means near to 1 is desirable and NSE is one step you know further improvement of R square, but R square is still very much efficient accepted among the modeling community. NAC is just one step you know above one step what you call improvement of R square. So, this can be used largely for hydrological modeling. IOA another indicator which we try to test our performance of our model. IOA index of agreement the values lies between 0 and 1 which is similar like R square. So, higher values are better indicate better performance by your model 0 and 1 for a worst and perfect fit for a model. So, if it is 0 your model is really bad performing and if it is 1 it is absolutely perfect. In fact, when it is 1 then also we actually you know try to figure out that if everything is ok because 1 is means it is you know absolutely fine. So, little less than 1 like you know 0 0.9, 0 0.8 is quite good basically. So, one is perfect situation and other is perfectly bad situation. So, IOA also proposes to overcome the insensitivity of NEC and R square to what? To the difference in the observed and simulated means and variance. Very, very important. Please note this particular point. So, IOA it helps to overcome the insensitivity of NEC and R square towards the observed and simulated means and variances. So, if that is also taken care of through IOA then actually your you know performance testing of model become you know much more robust. Okay? Now, with continuation of model performance indicators like visual indicators we can always you know that we try for this kind of graph to see that observed values versus simulated values if it lies like this, 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 this way then if we get a perfect straight line and then we say that simulated values are perfectly matching with observed value and the performance of your model is very good. Sometimes people call it as 1 is to 1 you know line for testing the performance of your model. Now, observed versus simulated data simultaneously plotted in this kind of line plot that I have just mentioned. Then you can have also you know scatter plots of simulated versus observed data together with 1 is to 1 line, regression line, percentage error line or say 95 percent confidence interval lines also. Then you can have also plots of residuals. These I am talking about all visual indicators which you can see basically you know in graphical form. So, plots of residuals at individual sites that means errors between observed and your simulated values that also can help you giving you know some kind of visual indication of your model performance. Contour maps of observed and simulated data also often try to find out the model performances for a particular you know time period. Sometimes spatial maps also are being carried out for showing spatial distributions of simulated data residuals for a specific time period. So, these all are basically one or other way of visualizing you know your model performance through some indicators. Music